When I first started gardening, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And I wish I would have known these five things which would have made my life so much easier. Today, I'm gonna share them with you. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. My name is Veronica and on this channel I teach people how to garden, homestead in the suburbs in an urban environment, um, in small space, all of that. So if that sounds good to you, don't forget to subscribe. Today I am going to be walking you through the five things I wish I would have known when I first started gardening because gardening is such a vast term. You can garden in pots, you can garden in your backyard, in raised beds like I do, you can garden in ground. There's so many different ways to garden and there really are so many different techniques. So having some basic knowledge is really essential when you're first starting out and these things I wish somebody would have told me to make myself feel not as like a newbie and just put myself at ease. So let's jump right into it with number one is that you will constantly be learning new things and what that means is that as soon as you learn one new technique in gardening there will be a thousand other ones as soon as you know how to cure one kind of pest there's gonna be a thousand other types of pests I'm constantly learning new things as is every other gardener there's not like a, an end goal to I know everything about gardening that's not exactly how it works once you learn how to plant transplants in the ground you're gonna learn how to start seeds and you're gonna learn how to grow in a greenhouse and you're gonna learn how to grow in cold weather and hot weather and so many other things so having a basic understanding of gardening and how to actually get plants started is one thing but just know that you're going to have to keep doing this over and over again which is why watching YouTube channels like mine or reading gardening blogs or even picking up some of my favorite gardening books which by the way are in the description below anything like that is a good way to get yourself accustomed to other techniques other types of gardening you know how it works for other people and even in other areas where you know my climate is different from somebody else's climate I can still use that information. So just know that if you are getting into gardening, you are not going to absorb all the information and be done with it. You're going to continue having to grow and continue having to do some research and learn more as you go and it's never ever going to end. But don't worry, that's the fun part. All right, so for number two, I'm going to bring you over here to my little greenhouse, which is a prime example of what it is I'm about to tell you and that is that you cannot grow everything year round. These are my sweet potato slips and sweet potato is a very hot season, hot weather crop, right? So they are just growing their slips now and I'm gonna be planting those out into these raised beds over here, which I am in the process of filling them up. Um, so they will be going in there just in time for the heat of summer. You can see how I have tons of other things here though. I have some beans, I have tomatoes, I have cucumbers, I have a bunch of other things that are growing and some nice little ripe tomatoes just coming in now, all right? And these things are doing really well in this season. However, you will not be able to grow everything in every season or everything in your zone period, all right? I'm in Central Florida zone 9B, which means that it stays pretty consistent here year round. It really doesn't get too cold, it doesn't snow, um, it does get quite hot in the summer and we have sort of like a mild winter all right if you want to call it winter but you know what I can only grow certain things at certain time of the year and that is going to be true no matter where you live across the board and a prime example of that is these radishes all right which I picked up from the gardening center the other day now I am super excited to grow these radishes and why did I pick them up from the gardening center well, because I wanted to, but you can't really grow them right now. It is the middle of summer. It is 80 something degrees outside right now. All right, at the time of filming this video and these radishes are not gonna grow, but they still sell them at the gardening center because people buy them. So just know that if you go to the gardening center and you pick up a packet of seeds, that does not mean that it is going to be able to be planted right now. And one of the biggest things that I struggled with at the beginning was planting out seeds, waiting for them to grow or germinate or whatever it is, and then finding out that I wasted my money because these things really don't grow at this time of year in my region or they just don't grow here at all. Which means that the best thing you can do is find something like this. These are my okra seedlings and I know that they are going to do really well in my raised beds over here once I plant them out along with my little sweet potato slips and I know this because I've done the research so just find out what hardiness zone you're in find out what grows well in your area find out what grows well in your area in summer or winter or fall or whatever season it is right now and plants based off of that if you do that you're going to save yourself so much headache and so much wasted time effort and money 
All right, so before we move on to the next one, which I can't wait to share with you guys, but before we move on to that, I want to share with you guys that I have a free gardening checklist to setting up your perfect dream vegetable garden in eight simple steps. That is a free download. Um, I will leave that in the description bar below. You can download that, grab that copy, and let's move on. Which brings me to my next point, that gardening can get expensive pretty fast, all right? Each one of these raised beds costs money to set up. Every single one of these plants in these raised beds costs money to start them, money to maintain them, money to even buy the seeds to get them going. The same is true with my little mini greenhouse over here, my potting bench, all of these pots. Um, everything that you see here costs money, so it gets expensive fast. However, there's going to be ways, like right here, that you can actually save money. Now, these are my little red solo cups. All right, these are just regular red solo cups. I've drilled holes in the bottom of them for drainage, but I get these at the grocery store for like $3 for 50 or 60 or 70 of them, however many come in that package. And you can see that I have a whole bunch here. The same thing with these little plant containers that I have reused, all right? I have a bunch of them. So every single time that I buy something from the store, I can reuse these and that saves tons of money. The same thing applies for this giant bin. Right now I'm using it as just storage, um, but somebody in my neighborhood was planting trees and I asked them what they were gonna do with these containers, all right? And these are actually for planting out trees. So every time I have trees, like my little Moringa trees over here, all right, and I have to pot them up, all right, I reuse these ones and then pot them up into bigger ones and bigger ones and bigger ones, and that is how I save a ton of money. The same thing goes for making my own compost, all right? This is my compost bin, and I put in my scraps, um, anything that comes out of the garden, anything that, you know, food scraps that comes out of the kitchen. Um, there's a little tomato that the birds got to, all right? So anything that comes in here, and granted, this does take a little bit of time, but it is such a great way to use what you have, all right? Save tons of money in the process, and give it a couple of spins. And voila, you have another free resource for your soil. So instead of spending tons of money when you're first starting out on buying tons of gardening stuff, just see what your neighborhood has for free, right? If people are getting rid of stuff, you can reuse potting containers. You can even get free potting containers from the big box stores, all right? A lot of the times that they throw them out or they have them just in a pile at the exit um, that you can take them and they're pretty much free all the time. So there's tons of ways that you can save money gardening, but it does add up fast and I have spent tons of money on my garden all right and then once i spent all that money i started looking for ways to garden for cheap or for free or whatever the case may be and i have actually been really successful in reusing materials and doing that kind of thing i have an entire video that i can link down for you guys in the description below ways to garden on a budget that have really saved me tons of money all right so number four is this one right here if you can see there are some brown leaves on here things that are getting really crispy all right things that need to be definitely removed from the garden but it is that your garden is not always going to look perfect all right these cucumbers look nice and bright and green at the beginning of the season but of course we have had some powdery mildew um, and even though i've been trying to keep on top of it life kicks in and we do have some little cucumbers back here we have one two and then we have another one up here all right so the plants are still growing and we're still getting food but it's not going to look always perfect down here this looks nice and green and beautiful all right but don't worry too much if you also have things that look like this or some plants die because that is a normal process all right just because a plant died does not mean you killed it or it's your fault all right and there are just going to be certain things that don't do well and not all seeds are set to germinate and not all plants are set to survive the same thing with these little tomatoes all right these are all flowers at one point in time and we have had some little cutworms come in here and just cut the top of these little flowers so just know that in the garden there are going to be things that go wrong they're going to be pests and disease and things that come into your garden to make it not so perfect that's a normal part of gardening it doesn't mean that you're failing as a gardener it doesn't mean that you're not going to get a harvest it just simply means that nature is trying to take over and you're going to have to do a little bit of work to control it a little bit more but that's part of gardening and without those things it would be no fun and then for our last one i am going to come back in here into the garden all right and i'm going to show you how many little green beans we have growing all right and i actually just picked a bunch of them yesterday and i mean like a bunch as in i have 
like mixing bowls worth of green beans sitting on my countertop right now, all right? But we still have tons of food that are going to be ready to be picked in the next couple of days as well, along with some of these tomatoes and some cucumbers like I showed you guys before. All right, and then we have tons more little cherry tomatoes that are ripening up here on the vine. So the last thing that you should know when you first start gardening is how to maximize your gardening space so when you first start gardening you put one or two transplants in a pot or you you know you stick them in the garden and you pretty much are content with that right but as you go getting better at gardening and you want to grow more food you don't necessarily expand on your space which means you need to maximize on the amount of space that you currently have all right that's where companion planting and square foot gardening and vertical gardening and all those things come into play and knowing a lot of those things ahead of time will help you plan out your garden for the season and it will help you grow so much more food in a tiny amount of space all right i am currently gardening in 60 square feet of space it is two feet wide all right by 30 feet long it goes from one end of our um our fence to the other end of our fence and we have actually added more space this season however for the past year or so i've been gardening in 60 square feet and i'm still producing tons of food for our family like i mentioned i have tons of green beans in the freezer um, i have tomatoes that are ready to be put into sauce all right and we are still getting tons of food because we have been able to maximize the amount of space we have by growing more food in a smaller area if you guys want to know more about that i will link that video here up above because i made an entire video on how you can do the exact same thing thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one